The Real Story of Anini, Nigeria's Most Notorious Armed Robber Anini was born in 1960 in a village about 20 miles from Benin City, present-day Edo State. He migrated to Benin at an early age, learned to drive and became a skilled taxi driver. He became known in Benin Motor Parks as a man who could control the varied competing interests among motor park touts and operators. He later delved into the criminal business in the city and soon became a driver and transporter for gangs, criminal godfathers and thieves. Later on, he decided to create his own gang which include Monday Osumbo, Ofage, and others, and they started out as car hijackers, bus robbers, and bank thieves. Gradually, he extended his criminal acts to other towns and cities far north and east of Benin. The complicity of the police is believed to have triggered Anini's reign of terror in 1986. In early 1986, two members of his gang were tried and prosecuted against an earlier under-the-table agreement with the police to destroy evidence against the gang members, the incident. And Onini's view of police betrayal is believed to have spurred retaliatory actions by Onini. In August 1986, a fatal bank robbery linked to Onini was reported in which a police officer and others were killed. That same month, two officers on duty were shot at a barricade while trying to stop Onini's car. During a span of three months, he was known to have killed nine police officers in an operation in August of 1986. The Onini team struck at First Bank, Sabonjidora, where they carted away 2,000 naira. But although the amount stolen was seen as chicken feed, they left the scene with a trail of blood. Many persons were killed on September 6, same year, the Onini gang snatched a Pusho 504 car from Albert Otto, the driver of an assistant inspector general of police, Christopher Omba. In snatching the car, they killed the driver and went to hide his cop somewhere. It was not until three months later that the skeleton of the driver was spotted 16 kilometers away from Benin, along the Benin Agbo Highway. A day after this attack, Onini, operating in a Posot car believed to have been stolen, also effected the snatching of another Pusho 504 car near the former Fidico office. In Benin, two days after, the Onini men killed two policemen in Orio 1 local government area of the state. Still in that month, three different robbery attacks, all pointing to Onini's involvement, took place a day after the operation Onini, the law, turned to a Father Christmas as he threw words of Naira notes on the ground for free pick by market men and women at a village near Benin. Onini thus spearheaded a four-month reign of terror between August and December 1986. Anini also reportedly wrote numerous letters to media houses using political tones of Robin Hood-like words to describe his criminal acts, worried by the seeming elusiveness of Anini and his gang members. The then-military president, General Ibrahim Babanjida, ordered a massive manhunt for the kingpin and his fellow robbers. The police thus went after them in every part of Bendo State where they were reportedly operating and living. The whole nation was gripped with fear of the robbers and their daredevil exploits. However, police manhunt failed to stop their activities, the more they were hunted. The more intensified their activities became. Some of the locals in the area even began to tell stories of their invincibility and for a while, 
it felt like they were never going to be caught. However, at the conclusion of a meeting of the Armed Forces Ruling Council in October 1986, General Babangida turned to the Inspector General of Police, Itum Inyan, and asked, My friend, where is Onini? At about this time, Nigerian newspapers and journals were also publishing various reports and editorials on the Onini Challenge, the Onini Saga, the Onini Factor, Lawrence Onini, the Man, the Meat, Onini, Jack the Ripper, and Lawrence Onini, a Robin Hood in Bendo. Finally, he took the courage of Superintendent of Police, K.A.D. Unororo, to bring the Onini reign of terror to an end. On December 3, 1986, Unororo caught Onini at number 26, Oyomosa Street, opposite Igodola Primary School, Benin City, in company with six women. Acting on a tip-off from the locals, the policeman went straight to the house where Onini was hiding and apprehended him with very little resistance. Yunororo led a crack ten man team to the house, knocked on the door of the room, and Onini himself, clad in underpants, opened the door. Where is Onini? The police officer inquired. Dazed as he was caught off guard and having no escape route, Onini all the same tried to be smart. Oh, Onini is under the bed in the inner room. As he said it, he made some moves to walk past Yunororo and his team. In the process, he shoved and headbutted the police officer but it was an exercise in futility. Yunororo reached for his gun, stepped hard on Onini's right toes and shot at his left ankle. Anini surged forward but the policeman took hold of him and put him in a sitting position. They then pumped more bullets into his short leg and almost severed the ankle from his entire leg. Already, anguished by the excruciating pains, the policeman asked him, Are you Anini? And he replied, My brother, I won't deceive you, I won't tell you lie, I'm Anini. Anini was shot in the leg, transferred to a military hospital, and had one of his legs amputated. When Anini's hideout was searched, police recovered assorted charms, including the one he usually wore around his waist during operations. Due to amputation of his leg, Onini was confined to a wheelchair throughout his trial. He was sentenced to death by Justice James Homohageje and executed on March 29, 1987. Thanks for riding with us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.